Hi everyone, welcome to my channel for the geeks. In this video, we will learn about how to customize the JSON server. It is continuation from my previous video, basics of JSON server, wherein we saw what is JSON server, its setup and about the fake APIs. If you haven't seen that video already, I would highly recommend you to watch that. The URL of that video is in the description box below. Now let's start customizing the JSON server. Now the question arises, why do you want to actually customize the JSON server? So there are various scenarios. So in the previous video, uh, the basics JSON server, we set up the server in 30 seconds and we were up and running. But in most real time scenarios, you, ne you need more control over the server. So th that is where customizing comes handy. For instance, if you want to change the port of the JSON server, like by default it starts at port 3000, but you want uh, for some reason it to start on some other port, you can do that. Another thing is that every record in the JSON file is identified by a property called ID. It has to be that. You are stuck with the name ID unless you actually customize the JSON server. For instance, if you have an employees endpoint and you want every record to be identified by employee ID, you need to customize it. Let me open db.json file to show you what property I'm talking about. As you can see, every endpoint has a property called ID. One more thing you can do with customizing the server is you can actually tweak the incoming request as per your needs. For instance, if you want to see if the request is valid or if you want to redirect URLs from one to another, you want to add some properties to a request or anything else that you can think of. Finally, in the demo section, we will actually test out the APIs like doing the get, put, delete and post. Now let's start uh, setting up the JSON server. So I have created an empty custom JSON server folder on my C drive and I install package.json and then install JSON server locally. So once this command runs, you will see the node modules uh, installed now. Uh, in the db.json, I have removed all the default endpoints and created employees. Uh, I wanted to keep it simple so it has only two records in it. Next thing I do is I create server.js file which is a javascript file and I copy uh, some certain code in it. Um, I will share server.js as well as db.json in the github repo. And in the demo section, I will take you through each and every line of the code and I will explain you what it means. So on the left, I have server.js. On the right, I have postman. I start the server uh, on my command prompt and um, the server is running on port 5000. I validate the same from the Chrome browser. And you can do the same through postman app as well. Um, so the point to note here is that uh, on the left in the server.js file we have given port as 5000 and that's why server starts on the port 5000. Uh, I will explain server.js one by one. So the first comment says you require the JSON uh, server module and then you actually create the server and then you set up some uh, middleware. Comment 3a is where you actually set the ID to be the employee ID. Comment 6 is where you actually redirect the URL. So imagine your APIs are sitting behind custom URL. So for instance, if you want to redirect everything and anything which comes to customer URL slash employees to directly employees, you can do that. So on the right, you can see I do custom URL slash employees and then I do a send and it still returns the same response. So which is actually redirecting it, that's all. Let's insert a new record doing a post. Um, so I remove the employee ID because it is generated automatically. I create the employee named James. I add the content type as application JSON and then I do a send. So on the in the response, you can see that there is a created at property being added. And that is because of comment seven in the server.js file wherein we actually add date dot now. On comment eight, we are saying every incoming request need to have a last name. Otherwise, throw an error and appropriate message like L name is required. So this guy who is new James 2 doesn't have a last name and we get the error. Now let's look at db.json. It has employee ID 3, which is what we created using post. And now let's update employee ID 3 uh, to his first name. 
let's name it new james3 and l name the last name remains the same and i do a put you can see on the left that the on the first name is updated as expected uh, now let's try to delete uh, the third employee so i sent employee slash three and remove the body and again send the request and on the left it reloads and removes it and that's how you customize the json server you can customize it even more but i think even knowing it that you can customize the json server is helpful i hope you liked this video in the github link i have shared all these files like the server.js and db.js db.json and the whole collection of postman so you can just use this and import it in your postman and you can start trying out get and all the other uh, api requests i have also explained customizing json server in my blog so you can see it in here uh, i will provide the links to my github and this blog in the description below I will share another video wherein you can create the mock server using postman itself so stay tuned for that hope you learned from the video and found it useful uh, please do not forget to like my video and provide me with some comments thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed already please do subscribe thank you goodbye